I am Yokoyama with the Waseda University. Thank you very much for inviting me to this uh, uh, international symposium. And uh, Mr. Kobe, Mr. Obayashi, thank you very much for contacting me. Today, my topic is uh, the features of power system and issues on international connection in Japan. It's a slightly uh, negative sounding topic. So, in that case, uh, what kind of next generation network is to be needed to effectively utilize the renewable energy? I'd like to also focus upon that particular side as well. First of all, future network and uh, super grid for cross-regional electricity transfer and uh, features of power system issues on international connection in Japan. First is this one, up until Today, there is a major network, large-scale plants, particularly the nuclear power plants, do exist. 30 to 40 percent and 50 percent was the ratio that the Japanese government went to expand to that ratio. They uh, developed that in the remote areas and uh, 200 kilometers away from uh, Tokyo. Uh, however, in 2011, this portion was damaged by the tsunami waves. So what we did was, in that year, 15% uh, energy saving was done uh, following the instructions from the government as well. And there was a Danish uh, example shown earlier. Local generation uh, would be secured. And uh, more locally, uh, we wanted to create some generation functions. The upper side is a more concentrated generation. The lower side is more distributed. Uh, network. So best uh, energy mix based on distributed generation network. Excluding nuclear energy, what are available? LNG is the only one. Then the gas the combined cycle gas engine. And we have a uh, lot of coal. So uh, IGCC, uh, gasification uh, technology can be applied in the future. Fewer cells can be utilized as well. So these are the core technologies in energy. Next one is uh, renewable energy. Once you include rene renewable energy, output is not uh, stable. Therefore, you need the batteries. And the new, so the new energy plus batteries will be the combination going forward. Then EAMS, a control system is to be needed as well in that way. Like I said, renewable energy is included, then the output can be variable. Particularly in the case of solar PV, this is the variation. Uh, transmission, particularly the distribution portion toward the end, uh, that will exceed the upper limit. Then uh, it, you have to stop uh, this uh, uh, facility as well, which is not so fair. Frequency uh, can be variable as well uh, because of the uh, wind energy. So the frequency may change. And the voltage issue, frequency issue were covered by the power companies. However, going forward, consumers need to also cooperate in that regard as well. So as mentioned over here, smart meters need to be incorporated. Visualization is also needed. Battery use is needed. A few, uh, uh, the electronic uh, vehicles are also promoted by the government as well. And so controlling will be more and more complicated. Therefore, EMS, energy management system, will be put in place. Once you put it in the house, it's called HEMS, home EMS, that is. Up until a short while ago, in order to incorporate renewable energy, a microgrid was to be needed, such as places like Hachinohe for local generation, local consumption. So loop was created and the GA line was created. And so those people who want to send uh, power supply power, they can do that. Those people who want to receive it, they could do that. But in order to strike a good balance, EMS is to be needed. Intelligence control system was the name at the time. Uh, this was not enough, and therefore normally, over here, uh, hardware backup, that is battery energy storage system, will be placed, which is inside the network and to strike a balance between supply and demand. But this was not enough, therefore this was uh, connected to the grid. That is uh, backup. So the uh, electric, uh, power backup was also needed. That means all this uh, costed very much. So in Hachinohe microgrid, 
it was too costly, so it was not so uh, popular. But it's been 10 years since then, so the situation has been changed. In 2008, President Obama talked about uh, smart grid. But for the sake of elections, uh, from ICT companies, he received the support, and so he wanted to contribute to their profitability as well. So the uh, grid remained the same. ICT smart meter was allocated to gather data, and uh, the total uh, system of itself uh, would be run in an efficient way, which is a smart grid. Uh, we still use a smart meter. And so we have not come to the stage where we provide the solution in the true sense of the term. So this is still something that should be taking place going forward. Now, this is the how uh, Japan should be aimed at. So summarize what I said. What we expect as uh, consumers is uh, stable power and inexpensive power and uh, clean power. So the power companies, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, it ne needed to create a smokestack uh, system, which is Edison model. Western model. So over 100 years, they built such a system. However, uh, as uh, followed by the tsunami, and uh, creating transmission lines for 200 kilometers is not that easy. And so rather than creating such uh, power supply at the distance of place, we should locally uh, develop those facilities. Also, transmission lines will be quite often opposed by the local residents as well. And therefore, this is also vulnerable to the natural disasters. So 40% uh, of the system can be lost all at once. So there is certain limit to this type of model. Then, what uh, should we be building going forward? One is a smart grid. This is very popular. The power company, however, is not so much positive about it. The reason is, in the case of Japan, you have to use a small tomita on your own. So that means you make investment in ICT. So the uh, operators uh, uh, save money. And so once you make investment, then that means that uh, uh, it will be cost. And so they don't want to do that. So they are a bit uh, hesitant to going in that direction. And so cost uh, effectiveness is not that good for them. And the government uh, was trying to push uh, for microgrid. In the case of the US, uh, good citizens was uh, the word. Uh, when someone is in need of help, you help them. When you are in need, uh, you are helped. But in Japan, it is uh, the other way around. And uh, when you're in trouble, you receive it. And uh, when you have surplus, uh, uh, take it uh, from me. And so just like my son. And so to the end of the month, uh, well, my PC is broken. Can you give me more money? So your PC breaks uh, each month. And that's what I say to my son. And so in the eye of the uh, microgrid, in the eye of the power uh, uh, company, that is a parasite. Engineer of a, a tube electric power company uh, actually describes that in a book. So smart grid, microgrid uh, is not something that the power companies are positive about, therefore. Then what kind of uh, network are we going to create? And that is the a, uh, comfort and efficiency should be uh, secured. Uh, the uh, lifestyle should also be changed, the heat uh, utilization as well. So this wording was good. And so METI and the uh, Environmental Ministry liked it. And the Compact City Eco Town, those words are also used by those uh, ministries. Another is a uh, resilient uh, network and a uh, more independent network. Uh, many of those are created by municipality. It's a cluster type, cluster type of grid. And the resources uh, utilization is another area. And also a flexible utilization of electricity uh, across regionally or country as well. So uh, I'd like to move on to uh, uh, review some of these and then go to smart grid. This is a smart community. This is a community. Smart, when it comes to smart grid, and uh, power companies are not so much positive about it. And that is for the sake of the country, but still they are a bit res resistant. And therefore, the central government talks about uh, the heat infrastructure, uh, car infrastructure, and lifestyle uh, conversion. So smart communities should be created. So they pro came up with such a proposal. So the basic uh, unit is a smart house, light rail, uh, like, a, like a tram type, we could home. And uh, instructions are given centrally. So there will be such uh, clusters. 
here and there. That is a small community. In the case of Japan, there are four major projects, Yokohama, Hitakyushu, Keihan, and Toyota. So there are different types of uh, communities. In the case of Yokohama, uh, these wonderful members are gathered in there. 27,000 kilowatts uh, solar PV is incorporated uh, to accommodate 4,000 household smart house and 2,000 EV will be also spread. So clusters are placed in the community and uh, centrally they are controlled. So going forward, 24% of the CO2 are expected to be reduced. This project uh, was already completed last year, so I think they will come up with some kind of outcome. In Japan, this type of project is very hard to do. In the case of NEDO, they uh, conduct their projects overseas. Uh, Lyon, France, uh, Manchester in the UK, uh, Mar Malone in Spain, uh, Java, New Mexico, those are the places. A Three billion yen project uh, are each of those. And the first one was uh, done in New Mexico, as shown over here, gas engine and a lead engine and a storage uh, system, mega solar, those were used. And what's important is over here, EMS, microgrid EMS, micro EMS. And Toshiba probably created it. So they are very fine the effect. Now, these are the uh, Mesa del building, uh, 400 kilowatts uh, load is applied. And the fuel cell and gas engine are incorporated and this type of EMS uh, was uh, uh, created. And this EMS is uh, to monitor its own system to balance. However, for the external ones, uh, there is a linkage point that can be sorted out. If there is a blackout outside, at least this uh, area would survive. Uh, was it possible to do that? This was a demonstration result. Uh, this is uh, connected, this here, a cut, then a gas engine and battery are uh, balancing very well, voltage and frequency are maintained at a stable level. And uh, in the commercial building of the US, uh, uh, inter uninterruptible uh, lines are, are able. Cable burned the other day in Ikebukuro the other day at the time. Uh, the police department uh, and the Kasumi Gansi government buildings uh, suffered from blackout as well. That usually won't happen, but the Japan probably has just a very standard system. We need some special system like this. Another thing is a cluster type. I mentioned earlier the single unit is a smart house, one house. There is a PV on the rooftop, but there is no electricity during the day, so battery you need to be used, which is quite costly. So, uh, EV uh, vehicle can be used, but it costs uh, 3 million, which is rather expensive. So not all the households uh, should have those. They can form some association among those uh, houses and then uh, work together. So this is something they are working on. Uh, special zones can be declared, and if this is allowed, then uh, facilities can be shared. This line of thinking was applied to Yokohama project that I mentioned earlier. That is creating clusters and uh, sharing such uh, energy. Cluster type network uh, is different from the conventional one. Microgrid earlier that I mentioned was the battery at the center. But this was placed outside of the inverter. Then uh, this is uh, AC, this is DC, this is AC. So uh, from the DC side, via inverter, you can control. To this side, what they're going to do is uh, frequency and voltage can be controlled. So uh, this is the electricity uh, system type of uh, voltage can be achieved. If this is connected to the uh, system, and then electricity need to be controlled. So inverter will be placed over here. So voltage uh, frequency can be controlled and electricity can be controlled. Both of them can be controlled. So such a system is put in place in here. So in that way, uh, one created one. Uh, they created one and uh, they created another. So it is scale scalable or expandable. In the event if uh, there is a blackout, at least uh, this would survive. This would also survive. So the entire area may uh, survive. So. EMS functions uh, plus in the inverter, it can be independent. Uh, well, said uh, 10 years ago, proposed this one, particularly in Southeast Asia, uh, and uh, we proposed the Southeast Asia and then the islands. 
for example, we propose this one to create this one. For the other uh, areas, uh, there is a demand that we connect it that, in that way. So rather than before putting a transmission line, they can uh, get the power. This is good for isolated islands and remote areas and also unelectrified areas. And also in the case of blackout or disaster, the supply can be secure. So as I said, two things. In Japan, smart community is being promoted, which is resilient to disasters, cluster type uh, grid. That is one approach. Now, the third point, this is the main topic for me, that is a super grid. In the earlier presentation, it was fully covered. So let me be brief. At the beginning of this this uh, uh, endeavor, there is a, a wind power in the UK. Because of the introduction of wind power, there was an excess e electricity availability, which was brought into Norway. So electricity was transferred to Norway. And uh, after that, uh, this wind power is transferred to Norway. And there is a, a, a water pumped uh, generation, hydro. And then that is used the electricity used for hydropower and the power generated through hydropower in Norway is transferred to Germany and other countries or Denmark. So North Sea Power Wheel or Ring is the name given to this. So again, centering around the wind farm, uh, this super grid uh, is being constructed. Now, in the uh, European Wind Power Association is promoting this. And today, it is covering the Baltic area and it is expanding the uh, scope now. Now, to promote this further, that is a Club of Rome. Still, maybe you wonder, was still Club of Rome is active? But actually, Desertec uh, project was proposed by uh, this Club of Rome. This is the Sahara Desert. The heat of desert is used and uh, transferring over 2,000 kilometers away to Europe. And the, in Europe, about 15% of the demand is to be covered. Rather than PV, this is a solar heat being used. Using such a mirror, the temperature goes up to 1,000 degrees here to generate power using solar uh, heat. So in Europe, as was explained by the previous speaker, between various countries, a linkage uh, is already uh, established. In the beginning, this is a European continent, the synchronous uh, grid. And uh, this is also linked to Baltic uh, side and also Node Pool as well. And also it is connected to uh, UK. And it is also connected to Turkey and more recently uh, to Africa. Uh, linkage is built up. So uh, gradually, including Africa, the Europe is uh, pro making uh, such a super grid covering uh, Europe and a part of Africa. Such a concept can be applied to ASEAN too. ASEAN uh, grid or APG initiatives underway. According to an uh, old book uh, proposed by Jack Kazak, uh, where infrastructure is lagging behind, Asian countries can work together to uh, cooperate in such a grid initiative, starting in Laos and Thailand and Indonesia and coming down to Australia. This was the initiative. The aim of this initiative at that time was to mutual supply of electricity. By so doing, effective use of energy resources can be promoted and also that can facilitate a reconciliation of neighboring countries and also revitalize the regional economy. That was the objective. Then, slightly after that, uh, there is another initiative. This is uh, Professor Hiroya Masuda, uh, head of the Japan Policy Council, currently visiting professor of Tokyo University who ran a uh, Tokyo gubernatorial election uh, earlier. He proposed this uh, 10 years ago. Japan is an island country, but uh, perhaps we can start with linking up with Korea according to this proposal, from Wakanai, using a direct current uh, and connection can be established up to South Korea. And by so doing, we can solve the problem of the difference between the east and west of 50 and 60 uh, hertz. However, uh, I think this uh, initiative can be consummated uh, after slightly later than the plan. And the next uh, proposal is by Mr. Son and Mr. Tetsuya Iida. That is a super grid uh, plan. And HEVC of huge capacity can be used from Hokkaido down to Kyushu, AC. Uh, the DC can be used. And expanding this to cover Asia super grid. So this is the latest and newest uh, initiative. 
Mongolia, China, and also Korea, and also SoftBank. These four entities are working together uh, in feasibility study. So what is important about this project is that uh, although Japan is an uh, island country, undersea cable can be used by in order to use uh, abundant wind energy in Mongolia. And then this China has a huge pool. Therefore, fluctuation can be alleviated and high quality electricity will come to Korea and Japan. Therefore, the key would be wind power generation in Mongolia, uh, Gobi Desert heat, and also the collector technology and also the uh, AC transmission lines and converter station and HVDC. These are the technologies are key to this initiative. Now, if we do this, of course, there are several challenges. But one positive thing about this is to create a peak shift because time difference of three hours or so. So that means we have a 16 hours of the daytime, and also peak hours will be extended. This is good for electricity management. So uh, it's worthwhile. In terms of cost, as you can see, about two years ago, uh, 25 cents in Tokyo, that's high. Manila, it's expensive. And also Taipei, Singapore, and Hong Kong, the price is high. Compared to this, in the case of Ulaanbaatar, 6 cents. And Xi'an in Beijing, toward the uh, east, west, 9 cents. Therefore, there are regions uh, below 10 cents or so in the countries where uh, prices is more than 20 cents. Therefore, we can use the difference of prices for trading. Japan can uh, source uh, cheaper electricity, and also the uh, fluctuation can be alleviated. So this is economically viable. And also in the past, in the Mongolia, nothing was created in the grassland or desert, but Mongolia can generate power and gain money. So that is good for the country as well. However, it's not very easy to achieve such a goal. As you know, in the beginning, we had only one single company for power generation under the U.S. guidance after the war, uh, Honshu Island was divided into nine regions, and also Okinawa was reverted to Japan later on. Therefore, Hokkaido has independent, autonomous uh, power generation and transmission. Therefore, generation and uh, uh, ba it has to be balanced with demand. In this way, we had a regional monopoly. For uh, emergency situation, tie lines are connected. Uh, weak recoupling is provided. So our tie lines are not considered very important in the beginning. And 100 years have passed, and the introduction of uh, renewable uh, is making a challenge. We have to reinforce such tie lines. Another big problem is that we have uh, two uh, uh, fre frequencies in Japan. In Tokyo, we have 50 hertz, uh, because uh, Tokyo Electric Power Company introduced this technology from Germany, and also Osaka side introduced technology from GE. And 100 years later, it's very difficult to integrate these two different frequencies. That is why the country is divided into two hertz uh, frequencies, and the interconnection is very weak. So. The biggest company in Japan is a uh, TEPCO, uh, 60 gigawatt. And uh, it has only 1.2 gigawatt of frequency. And also, they want to uh, source electricity from other uh, companies. However, in Hokkaido, too, uh, there is only weak tie line uh, with Tohoku, too. Although Hokkaido is generating wind power, it can be transferred to Honshu Island. That is the problem. At the same time, before the tsunami occurred, that is to say, uh, if you look at the power generation mix in 2010, nuclear power accounted for almost 30 percent, energy 25 percent, and coal 30 percent. So in this way, uh, we had a very good balanced generation mix. However, unfortunately, in 2011, because of the tsunami, this was hit. After this tsunami, uh, you can see generation uh, mix uh, changed. Nuclear only accounted for 1 percent, energy more than 40 percent, coal 30 percent, and oil uh, in excess of 10 percent against the will of the government. So going forward, what would happen? Of course, efforts are made. 
This is the estimation by Okto. Okto is a uh, nationwide grid companies uh, to come up with a uh, electricity demand forecast. According to their forecast, nuclear power in 2020 is still accounting for 1% because only three units will be operational at that time. And uh, still, LNG and coal are used massively. So uh, going forward, what we need to do is uh, to operate uh, nuclear power plants as much as possible. Maybe it doesn't reach government target of 22%, though. And also, renewable energy, including hydro, is accounting for uh, 18%, and the government target of 24% is hard to achieve. Therefore, if nuclear power is proven to be safe, we have to uh, bring them on board again. And as a sixth option, uh, imports of energy is possible. If the energy derived from wind power, that would be more ideal. So the government is going to reinforce uh, facilities and capacity. First, in Hokkaido, between Hokkaido and Honshu, interconnection will be more established. Uh, 90 billion yen is needed for that. From Tokyo to uh, from Tohoku to Tokyo, the line is to be reinforced. It will take 7 to 11 uh, years, amounting to 16 billion yen. So it takes time. And also, uh, 50 hertz and 60 hertz are a different problem. It, we only have uh, uh, 1.2 million kilowatts. So if possible, 5 million kilowatts have to be supported. But for the time being, it will be raised to uh, 2.1 million and reach to 3 million. So it takes time, too. So according to the current plan, if the capacity is reinforced, still cross-regional uh, tie line is still weak. Therefore, we will not be able to uh, transfer electricity freely from any sources around Japan to consumer uh, market still. Now, Asia supergrid, ASEAN supergrid, Australia supergrid. In the future, maybe we will be connected to all these supergrids. However, in the meantime, Japan is an island country. Therefore, we need a uh, undersea cables. Somewhere, we have to establish uh, undersea cables. For example, I don't know who wrote this, but for example, there are two possible stories. From the north, it says R root. From the west side, K root is contemplated. So at, if you uh, spot the uh, dots like this, these are the landing points. So. If you take a landing point here, you don't have a tie line between the two islands, and therefore you can narrow down choices. Maybe this and this would be the landing point. However, still, the interconnection line uh, domestically is quite weak. But in any case, SoftBank or the other uh, countries participating in four-country project are considering what would be the uh, best uh, landing point. So Okto is promoting this. So within Okto, cross-regional coordination in is included in their name. So cross-regional operation and also power produced in Hokkaido should be transferred to Tokyo. Therefore, Okto would be more aggressive in promoting such a tie line and uh, uh, interconnection enhancement. Now, cross-regional Thailand has to be strengthened in order to make a super grid a success. That is a key for me. And in the case of the U.S., transmission line is very weak, according to many. In 2012 onward, a 60 or 70,000 kilometer extension plan is underway, and the uh, DC uh, interconnection is included. The objective of such construction is to increase the uh, supply reliability, and 20% uh, is for the connection of uh, renewable energy, and uh, power source is not considered very important here. So transmission line will be enhanced in order to increase supply reliability and also to increase penetration of renewable energy. So this is objective in the case of US uh, project. In the case of Europe, desertic uh, project is uh, quite successful. If you look at this project, uh, resources are scattered around the countries. A solar heat in Africa and also uh, northwest part of Africa, uh, wind power, and also Spain, uh, solar heat and wind power in the UK, and Pyrenees uh, hydro. So these diverse resources can be connected to be effective. Then 
how could we apply this to Asian case? What kind of uh, conditions are there? One is the country's connecting has to be stable politically, economically, and socially. So if you look at these countries in Europe, they are quite stable. So this condition is satisfied. And also, in the case of Japan, we have no resources. Mongolia have a, a very good resource endowment. So this condition is met. And also, the friendly relationship among countries has to be there. Although the countries in Asia are not at war, however, they are not so friendly to each other. Therefore, maybe the conditions are half met. So maybe 80% of conditions are met uh, to create a super grid in Asia. So in summary, electricity or energy infrastructure are expected uh, the uh, cheap stable and clean infrastructure and uh, uh, comfort life has to be promoted. But however, today we need to uh, secure energy and stability and stay safety. And then uh, energy sufficiency, efficiency, environmental con conservation have to be met, and also uh, energy efficiency and also renewable energy penetration has to be supported. And uh, in Asia, uh, the resiliency is also considered important. Resiliency and also cost saving, affordability. For that purpose, smart grid is not sufficient. Expandable grid is necessary. That would be the key. Then. What would be expandable grid, smart community, cluster type microgrid, and also the super grid involving many different countries. So including Japan and Asian countries have to promote uh, this. Thank you.